And you know what they say about divorcees. A hypocrite. Ladies and gentlemen, there are a lot of virtue signaling progressives out there uh, who uh, have finally discovered that thing called personal responsibility. Uh, and they want you to wear a mask uh, because that's what's personally responsible. I'm not going to cover everything. I'll leave the link down there. You can find it and go read this all for yourself. But uh, it's funny how they found personal responsibility. But I'm wondering, though, like I said, I'm not going to cover all this, but I'll, I'll touch on some of the higher points. Since we're going to be personally responsible, are you guys going to uh, demand personal responsibility from the LGBT homosexual crowd? Because they're 2 to 4% of the population, yet... In any given year, they're half or more of all new HIV infections. In fact, for all STDs, they're very high, disproportionately affected. And uh, since most STDs are not from in utero transmission or uh, an emer emergency medical technician getting them, sometimes it does happen, I understand, but well over 90% of them are because of promiscuity. So are you guys going to demand uh, personal responsibility? Hey, I'm just wondering, how about the city of Baltimore? Are you going to demand that uh, they practice personal responsibility because there's a, a lot of bastard children running around there uh, wrecking the place? And there's a bunch of other cities. I could go on and on. I'm not going to. But uh, so, I mean, if, if the government told you to, uh, and all you progressives listening, you follow along with me. If the government told you to not use drugs, you know, not smoke cannabis just to sit around and get high. It's not that you have MS or ataxia. You're depressed. So if the government tells you, and I'm against the war on drugs, but I'm playing devil's advocate here. If the government tells you to quit using hard drugs and quit smoking marijuana constantly, are you going to listen to that? If the government tells you to quit drinking alcohol in excess, in excess, I'll put that in quotation marks. Put it this way, if you're drinking a six-pack every night when you get home, that's probably in excess. If you're drinking 12 ounces every night, that's probably good for you. So if the government tells you to do that, are you going to quit? What if the government, and Dave, this one's especially for you. What if the government said quit smoking cigarettes because they turn your teeth yellow, if you have any teeth left, uh, and they make your breath stink, and cigarettes are not good for you. Now, I support anybody's right to smoke as many cigarettes as they want, but if the government tells you to quit doing that, are you going to quit? Uh-oh. But the government. So let me get this straight. Personal responsibility when it when it's convenient for you. I understand it's totally subjective. Okay, but I do. I still have to pay for people who uh, smoke a pack of cigarettes a day for 25 years. Do I still have to pay people for people who did hard drugs and ruin themselves? Oh, I do. Okay. My body, my choice. My body, my choice. And then they'll say, of course, well, you could get somebody sick and kill them with. COVID-19, well, uh, you could kill my wallet because you're making me pay for people who go out and engage in promiscuous relationships and get HIV. Or make them pay for it themselves. Do you want them to die? No, but I didn't do it. I had nothing to do with it. So if you don't pay for, if you don't go broke for the drug addict down the street from you, does that mean you hate him? It's, I, I, I do think it's funny. Uh, and this is an opportunity here where we can say, yes, no more health care spending for anything that has to do with an STD. And if we can establish that you are a chronic smoker, I shouldn't have to pay for that. Of course, they'll argue, well, once everybody gets old and, and everybody's going to have health problems, true. But I could just say, well, everybody, I'm not going to wear a mask and everybody's going to get old and everybody's going to have health problems anyway. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so... Personal responsibility. Progressives, uh, that's a, that's a double-edged sword. Be careful. But uh, here's some specific info related to masks. And again, I have the link down there to what I've written. And I'll leave the link for my COVID-19 hub page. And, uh, and you can see where all my sources are. So the progressives have been autistically repeating. we got to wear a mask because masks will stop coronavirus spread and if we stop coronavirus spread we'll stop deaths however in Japan which uh, some people on Twitter were uh, one Twitter twit stated that Japan did not engage in lockdowns or mass testing true 
universal masking is the reason because they handed out all these masks. The problem is Japan had a huge spike in numbers despite uh, being an Asian, uh, an, well, Asians typically do that, uh, Pacific Islanders. Um, those nations, you'll see them in the Philippines too. Uh, even before this, a lot of people walk around with masks in China as well. But Japan handed out a bunch of masks. So on May 11th, 2020, now see if you progressives can follow along here. I did the math for you. On May 11, 2020, Japan had 15,798 cases of COVID-19. On May or on June 11th, 2020, they had 17,292. That's a 9.4% increase. On 7/11/20, Japan had 21,129 cases, a 22.2% increase relative to 6/11/20. On August 3rd, and the article that I read this in was authored on August 3rd, so that's why I stopped there. On August 3rd, that's less than a month for you Democrats reading this from July 11th. On August 3rd, they had 38,687 cases, a whopping 83.1% increase in less than a month. So despite all those masks, Japan didn't stop a huge spike in cases. Now, did their death rate go through the roof? Because that's one thing we hear from all the progressives. Well, more cases. We got more cases. And, and everybody's going to die. And I'm projecting my fear and failures on everybody else. On September 20th, 2020, Japan had 1,500 deaths and a low death rate of 1.195 per 100,000. Much, much lower than those eight Democrat states up in the Northeast. But, but Japan wears masks. There are masks everywhere, and they are mass central. This shouldn't happen. But it did, dummy. Deal with it. And as of October 4th, 2020, Japan, despite wearing masks and a massive increase in cases, had a whopping, and I'm being facetious, death rate of 1.272 per 100,000. But, but, massive increases in, in cases despite masks. And yet there aren't piles of dead bodies a mile high in Tokyo. Who would have thunk it? So the mask doesn't do anything after you've got it. I mean, if you've handed out all these masks and you have a huge spike in cases, the masks aren't going to do you any good now because you've got the huge spike. So not only did Japan have a massive spike in cases, but the death rate didn't go through the roof because the people who are getting it aren't people who are in their mid-70s and smokers. The Nordic nations... I'm specifically talking, we'll start with Norway. Norway should be a veritable cemetery. The Scandinavian slash Nordic nations have shunned masks for the most part. Uh, their health officials ha didn't recommend them for the longest time. And I don't think the people, the people there just don't want to wear them. And they're probably a lot better people than, say, the people living in New York City. I'm just being honest here. Uh, the people in Norway are probably a lot cleaner, a lot more responsible than the average person in New York City. And, well, I mean, there's always somebody better, so you'll just have to deal with that. I know the New York people in New York City might be butthurt that they're not the center of the universe, but uh, that's the way it goes. Norway should be a veritable cemetery because it hasn't embraced mask mania. You may remember their health minister even came out some months ago saying their lockdown was an unnecessary and did not accomplish much. Norway hasn't embraced mask mania as the do-gooders say they should, although they did recommend, recommend masks in Oslo back in August. Norway's health authorities have doubled down on their recommendation for those without symptoms not to wear masks, arguing that the number of infections in Norway was now so low that they were unnecessary. In a memo, and I've got the memo linked, you can read this whole thing for yourself. In a memo published in English on its website, the Norwegian Institute of Public Health said that even in the best case with medical masks, which present 40% of infections, 200,000 people would have to wear them to prevent just one new infection per week. So they're, they did go about recommending masks, but uh, in the memo, they said the current epidemical, epidemiological situation in Norway, sorry, wearing face masks to reduce the spray, spread of COVID-19 is not recommended for individuals in the community without respiratory symptoms who are not in near contact with people who are known to be infected. If the epidemiological, epidemiological sorry, situation worsens substantially in a geographical area, the use of face masks as a precautionary measure should be reconsidered. 
If any such recommendation is made, the community should be given training to ensure correct use and the risks should be explained, especially the risks of a false sense of security, which is something Anthony Fauci said a long time ago. We'll get to that. And contamination of mass. So, uh, Norway recommended them in Oslo. Recommended, they didn't force them, and their death rate has been, and I'll, I'll, if you see my COVID-19 hub and my social distancing is working, question mark piece. Uh, I've got updates to a lot of e uh, Western European nations, sorry, uh, and the U.S., and I, Finland and the Scandinavian countries, Nordic countries are some of them I go over, and their death rates are really, really low. Finland's another one on eight, August 13, 2020, recommended the use of masks, but their death rate... And remember, just because you have a spike in cases doesn't mean it's panic time. But to Democrats who think only in black and white, it's a problem. See the Japan data I covered earlier. Finland's death rate has always been low. Sweden didn't do lockdowns. Uh, they didn't shut three quarters of their economy down. They're an outlier among most nations. And Sweden doesn't have piles. They should be a veritable cemetery, but they're not. And people who think it is bad there, go look at these those eight states up in the Northeast, uh, which include New York, New Jersey. <laughs> Their death rates are many times greater than Sweden's. So, uh, yeah. So Sweden, Finland, Switzerland, Norway, they basically gave the middle finger to mass. The Proglodytes also have a lot of explaining to do on whether one should wear masks or not. We'll wrap it up on that. And again, there's a whole bunch more info there if you want it, but I'm not going to stay here and talk for two hours. The medical experts advice has also been inconsistent on whether non-medical personnel with no symptoms should wear face masks in public. New York City Mayor and renowned doctor <laughs> Bill de Blasio, and this recently, this is way back in April, April or March, I can't remember exactly, big fat Bill de Blasio recently issued a directive to do so, quote, Quote, out of an abundance of caution, this is what I'm saying to all New Yorkers. Take a scarf, a bandana, just anything you have at home. A paper bag. I added the paper bag part. Just cover your face, especially if your name's Dave. Right, Dave? Just cover your ugly face if you're going to be in close contact with people who are not your own family under your own roof. End quote. And uh, renowned doctor Eric Garcetti, the mayor of L.A., also issued a sim similar directive. However... Just days earlier, this is March 26, so big fat Bill de Blasio said that in late March. Uh, the obese Bill de Blasio. On March 26th, the WHO tweeted. Now, this is the WHO, and they are the experts, and they know everything, and you need to do exactly what they say all the time. They tweeted, if you do not have any respiratory symptoms, such as fever, cough, or runny nose, you do not need to wear a medical mask. When used alone, masks can give you a false feeling of protection, Fauci autistically repeated this too, and can even be a source of infection when not used correctly. Now, they said that on March 26th, but that was uh, long after. On March 11th, they declared it a pandemic. Howard Zucker, New York State's health commissioner, said there was no clear evidence that covering one's ugly face in public, especially if you're in New York City, would slow down the rate at which disease spreads. So they got a lot of explaining to do. Uh, I, make sure you read the section of uh, New York City's MTA, how they hemmed and hawed and went back and forth. At first, they wouldn't let their transit workers wear masks. They actually forbid them because they were afraid it was going to scare the plebs. So they didn't want them to wear masks for the longest time. And then finally, after the you-know-what had already hit the fan, uh, then they said, oh, yeah, you can wear masks. And then it wasn't until April 16th that the MTA issued a bulletin mandating that both employees and passengers wear masks. <laughs> so, yeah, by, by then, you know, and New York City was still in the throes of it. Uh, it wasn't until, like, oh, late April that the, the daily deaths started really declining. And then they finally shut the subway on May 6th to clean it. So, yeah. Man, you ever got to wear a mask, except we didn't when the bodies were piling up. And if we contradict ourselves 20 times, uh, don't worry about that. Here's another. This doesn't refer to mass necessarily, but Fauci said this on February 28th. On the basis of a case definition requiring a diagnosis of pneumonia, the currently reported case fatality rate is approximately 
in another article in the journal, Guan et al. report mortality of 1.4% among 1,099 patients with laboratory confirmed COVID-19. These patients had a wide spectrum of disease severity. If one assumes that the number of asymptomatic or minimally symptomatic cases is several times as high as the number of reported cases, the case fatality rate may be considerably less than 1%. This suggests that the overall clinical consequences of COVID-19 may be ultimately, ultimately be more akin to those of a severe seasonal influenza which has a case fatality rate of approximately 0.1%, or pandemic influenza, similar to that in 57 or 68, rather than a disease similar to SARS or MERS, which have, a, have had case fatality rates of 9 to 10% and 36% respectively. And I urge you to read the whole article. There's a lot of ifs in there. I think I did quote that in one of my other videos. The progressives money morning quarterbacked. Uh, COVID-19. <laughs> Big fat Bill de Blasio in early March again was telling these idiots to go out on the town. Nancy Pelosi in late February was saying, uh, come to Chinatown. We're here. We're, we're here. Remember, Fauci said that on February 28th. Here's Fauci on uh, January 21st for news, uh, being interviewed with Newsmax. Bottom line, the host said, I think it was Greg Kelly, we don't have to worry about this one, right? And he said, Fauci said, quote, well, you know, obviously you need to take it seriously and do the kinds of things. Now, remember, this is January 21st, which me, uh, I I hate to do this. As an aside, you remember uh, the big fat Kamala Harris suggested Trump covered it up. Well, here's January 21st. Every hospital administrator knew about this. There was no cover up in January. <laughs> she said, Trump co covered it up. Well, if he covered it up in January, uh, you... I, I'm assuming everybody, I don't know what kind of uh, twilight zone she's living in, but here's Fauci on January 21st. After asked, do we, we don't have to worry about this one, right? Well, you know, obviously you need to take it seriously and do the kinds of things that the CDC and the Department of Homeland Security are doing. But this is not a major threat for the people of the United States. And this is not something that the citizens of the U.S. right now should be worried about. <laughs> and then later he went into, uh, Fauci went into uh, East German lockdown mode. It was crazy. He went from that to saying, I don't understand why every state is locked down. Wow. I'm almost done. On February 3rd, 2020, Fauci stole, told, Fauci told CNBC, CNBC, it's still an evolving situation. We don't know exactly where it's going to go what the pattern is. But clearly right now, at least number of cases are accelerating. And then, end quote, and in late March 2020, William Hazeltine, PhD, former professor at Harvard Medical School, blah, 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 admitted, quote, well, we know it's highly infectious, and as the day goes by, days go by, we're learning it's more infectious than we thought it was, say, a month ago, even two weeks ago. On February 29th, 2020. Fauci said, we did not need to change anything we're doing on a day-to-day -day basis. But Donald Trump was covering up, supposedly. On March 9th, 2020, Fauci said, if you are young and healthy, in other words, if you're not an old cigarette smoker, if you haven't been smoking cigarettes for 40 years, March 9th, 2020, Fauci said, if you're young and healthy, you can go on a cruise. Really? I'll amend that. I am young and healthy. I will not wear a mask unless I am in an establishment that orders me to do so, and I will not wear one in public, end quote. Community spread was known on February 29th, 2020 in Washington State, but when Farsi, I mean Fauci, was talking to the overweight Al Sharpton on April 12th, 2020, his tune changed. Now remember what he said before. And this is April 12, 2020, and he told Uncle Al that as soon as it became clear that it was community spread, then it became clear that we were in real trouble, alluding to later when Sharpton asked him about it. When were we in big trouble? Alluding later that the tipping point was middle January to the end of January. But you look at what Fauci was saying in late January in the New England of Journal of Medicine and to other people and on Newsmax, all of January and February and early March, obviously we weren't in big trouble according to him. Yeah, If we were in real trouble in middle to late in January, why was Ferret Face telling us on March 
February 29th that we don't need to change anything uh, on a, our day-to-day -day basis, how we go about our lives, and then on March 9th telling young, healthy folks go on a cruise. So it's obvious Fauci is in over his head. And then Tom Woods did uh, correct Fauci, noticed something silly. Fauci said we could relax social distancing once we have no cases, no new cases, no deaths, no new deaths, and trans as opposed to old deaths, but, and Tom Woods said, translation, they have no exit strategy, and that's true. One more thing about Fauci, actually we have a few more. Oh yeah, we're going to get to the face mask. Fauci didn't fare well at a recent house, and there was a whole bunch of articles, sorry about that, I hit the mic, a whole bunch of articles about this where people just sided with Fauci because he just, he got a silly look on his face and he waved his hand at Jim Jordan, but uh, no, uh, that won't work. Fauci didn't fare well at a recent House Select Subcommittee on the coronavirus pandemic meeting. He got himself into trouble because he previously said he didn't understand why every state wasn't locking down or ordering its plebs to shelter in place. He got himself into trouble for refusing to state explicitly that the protesters could or are spreading the virus. Yet churches were prohibited from having services in some jurisdictions. De Blasio was shutting parks and churches. Remember, parks are outside. But he was out protesting with Black Lives Matter, and Fauci refused to condemn the protesters. Fauci at one time was poo-pooing mass, as you know, and now looks at them as the savior of mankind. And Fauci was concerned about groups, quote, of folks he is blabbering aloud about. I just don't understand why every state isn't locking down. Then why couldn't he tell Rep. Jim Jordan that we can limit protesting? Fauci didn't actually say it, but he did insinuate that protesting has the capacity to spread the virus. If Fauci refuses to opine on limiting anything, that's something they keep repeating, why did he want all states to lock down? A shelter-in-place order similar to the one ordained in New York would certainly limit a lot of activity. So Fauci, he did get him in trouble. I know progressives were just having uh, hissy fits over that, but... If Fauci said he's not going to opine on limiting anything, then don't call for lockdowns. Here's another quote from Fauci. CDC is also working with partners to develop guidance and decisions tools to assist state and local officials and other, and other stakeholders in adjusting mitigation strategies. CDC has been recommending that people wear cloth face coverings in public settings around others outside of their households. There is increasing evidence that the ma these masks help prevent people who have COVID-19 from spreading it to others. And that was the same day he sparred with Jim Jordan. But much earlier, on March 8th, he said, when it comes to preventing coronavirus, public health officials have been clear. Healthy people do not need to wear a face mask to protect themselves from COVID-19. There's no reason to be walking around with a mask, infectious disease expert expert Anthony, Dr. Anthony Fauci told 60 Minutes, while masks may block some droplets. Now, this is critical here because I've had a lot of autistics, I mean progressives, say Fauci only wanted to prevent a run on masks. So I'm going to divert for a second here. There's two pushbacks that can demolish that. Number one, so you didn't want to run in masks while it was really, really bad because we had 15 days to stop the spread and flatten the curve. So how do we do that? Well, of course, progressives could say, we'll just shut everything down. Well, except for the subway, of course. We'll let that continue to run because that doesn't spread the virus. So he didn't want a run on mass when they would really be needed. While states or cities like New York City, the daily death totals were going through the roof in April. So, and uh, late March is when it started spreading really bad too. So we don't want to use mass when it's really bad. Now, then they'll say uh, another thing I can do to push back at that. He said, while masks may block some droplets. Well, Fauci right there is talking about the effectiveness of masks, not whether there's going to be a run on them or not. He's just saying, and let's continue the quote again. There's no reason to be walking around with a mask, he said. While masks may block some droplets. That's not talking about a run on masks. That's talking about the effectiveness of them. While masks may block some droplets, Fauci said, they do not provide the level of protection people think they do. Wearing a mask may also have unintended consequences. People who wear masks tend to touch their face more often to adjust them, which can spread germs from their hands. And I was down in Des Moines one day when there's a whole bunch of people down by the principal river walk. 
while these idiots were wearing masks. Can I call it? Yeah, I'll call them idiots. I would have recorded it, but it's kind of hard to blur people's faces out and be able to tell how much they're fiddling with their masks because I wouldn't want, if I did, I was going to record them and blur the face out, but then, well, if they're messing with their mask, the blur out would uh, cover that up. So, but I will tell you this, and you can believe it if you're not, if you want to or not, but these people, and then especially if, if there were young kids that had masks, these kids were fiddling with them left and right, and plus children aren't the driver of the virus anyway. But you'd be surprised at how often people rub their eyes, rub their mouth. Now, if you're using hand sanitizer literally every time you do that, then it would work, but you're not. And it was just funny watching these uh, people, these virtue signaling idiots, and it's down in Des Moines, so most of them are idiots. No offense to any registered Republicans or Libertarians down in Des Moines, but it's amazing how much people monkey with them. And I've been wearing one for quite a while now. It's been a long. I'm actually getting kind of used to it, but it, it takes a long time to get used to it. So, and by the way, uh, Old Fart Rams, Stan Cedar, and the janitor McCainus through X. What percentage of days before 2020 did you idiots wear a mask to prevent influenza? because tens of thousands of people die from that every year. Oh, what, uh, what percentage of days? Point, what, point zero 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 one percent outside a hospital? Oh, <laughs> yeah, more uh, hypocrisy here. Fauci did talk about shortage of masks later, but when he's talking about it blocking droplets, that means he's talking about they're not effect, uh, very effective. He also led on to later to say, for healthy people, both the WHO, this is Fauci, for healthy people, both the WHO and the CDC, Recommend they wear masks only when taking care of those who are sick or suspected of having the virus. In other words, doctors and nurses. <laughs> A lot of selective memory out there. We're almost done. Joe Biden and his campaign retards also every, owe everyone an apology for playing both sides against the middle on this. Joe Biden predictably pounced on the Bob Woodward revelations from Wednesday blaming Trump for America's COVID-19 deaths, even though uh, the eight jurisdictions in the Northeast and Illinois, seven of them have Democrat governors. They are leaning Democrat states. They have very high death rates, much higher than the seven Republican trifecta states that did not shelter in place. Continuing, and I'm sorry, I just have an urge to do that. Joe Biden predictably, pound, predictably pounced on the Bob Woodward revelations from Wednesday, blaming Trump for America's COVID-19 deaths and making the bizarre claim that if Donald Trump had acted just two weeks earlier, this is where people get themselves in trouble and they start running their mouths. He said if Donald Trump had acted two weeks earlier, 54,000 lives could have been spared in March and April alone, end quote, despite the fact that Trump was doing exactly what government experts like Fauci were recommending. But Joe Biden's politicized rhetoric doesn't match his own actions and statements. Joe Biden held eight rallies in March, the last one being the day before the WHO declared COVID-19 a pandemic on March 11th. So I guess Joe really, uh, he was just going with the flow too. But he would have done better, maybe, yeah. But just elect him and then you'll find out. But Biden's hypocrisy goes even deeper. At the same time, Trump was downplaying the coronavirus. Biden accused Trump of fear-mongering with his China travel ban, which was implemented on January 31st. Two weeks after Trump's China travel ban was put in place, Ron Klain, Barack Obama's former Ebola czar, who is currently advising the Biden campaign, said that we didn't have a COVID-19 epidemic in the U.S., but a fear epidemic, and then praised New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio, whose coronavirus response is now almost universally panned, a couple of weeks later, Ron Klain encouraged Americans to go out and buy a meal, go shopping, and lamented that people were afraid to do so because of prejudice. And if you're not going around while the coronavirus is getting spread, you must hate black people. I added that part. Remember, Ron Klain is advising the campaign, and Joe Biden is trying to rewrite history to suggest that he had been suggesting quicker action against the virus when no one, not the medical experts advising the White House or Fauci, or his own advisor was suggesting shutting down the country at that point. Biden is full of you-know-what. Probably the best one, Kaylee McEnany. 
tried uh, 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 Stooge from Reuters tried to uh, corner her. He said, in a previous life, before you were press secretary, you worked for the campaign, and you made a comment, I believe, on Fox, in which you said President Trump will not allow the coronavirus to come to this country. Given what has happened since then, obviously, would you like to take that back? End of quote. Well, and then I've got links to all this, too. And she went through a list of, does Vox want to take back that they declared the coronavirus would not be a deadly pandemic? <laughs> does the Washington Compost want to take the back the fact that they told Americans to get the grip? The flu is bigger than their coronavirus. You see, this reminds me a lot of the Iraq War. Forget whether you're for it or against it, but how Democrats, most of them, tripped over themselves to defend it and voted for it. And Saddam under Clinton was a threat and got to get rid of him. And, 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 and then a couple years later, they were using it for political purposes. This is what it's like. Does the Washington Post likewise want to take back their statement that our brains are causing to us, us to exaggerate the threat of COVID-19? Does New York Times want to take back what they said that the fear of virus, the fear of the virus is spreading faster than the virus itself? And then just a month later, there's a pile of bodies a mile, mile high in New York City. <laughs> oh, New York Times, you guys are great Monday morning quarterbacks. Does NPR want to take back that the flu is a much bigger threat than COVID-19? That's what a lot of them, and Vox just went with it. Vox knows nothing. Vox just regret. What happens is the media, the media echo chamber vomits it onto the table, and then Vox, they lick it up, they lap it up, and then they regurgitate it. So they, these guys aren't visionaries. They aren't out in front of, of this. They were just repeating whatever. And then as soon as it became a political thing and the Democrats said, you know what? I bet we can destroy Trump with this. How about Ilhan Omar? On March 26, she was calling for a national lockdown, which would likely be considered unconstitutional, depending how you know, a New York style lockdown on a national level, even for Wyoming too. That just shows she's not very bright. There's what about Western Iowa? There's hardly anybody out there either. Uh, you lock down Western Iowa, really, and Wyoming? Are you kidding me? No, she's not. She's literally that brain dead. Now, on March 26th, she was calling for a national lockdown, but on a rally she had on April, or excuse me, March 2nd, the troglodyte was telling her entire audience to hold hands. She, the thrice-married low-IQ moron, Ilhan Omar, was telling her audience to hold hands. This was after community spread was known in Washington state. And then 26 days later, national lockdown. See, she doesn't know anything. She's, they're all Monday morning quarterbacking everything. So uh, I think I could go over a lot more, but I, I think that's it. I'll, that's all I'm going to cover in this video. And I'll leave the link down there. There's plenty of it you can read. But basically, progressives, they Monday morning quarterback the whole thing. They were... Uh, against masks and they weren't saying anything about it until they thought oh we can make everybody wear masks and and we can use this against trump when fauci and everybody else was recommending against it uh, and they've all eh, it's just it's the typical crap you see from them and uh hypocrisy monday morning quarterbacking and stupidity and again uh uh since we have to be responsible and wear a mask that means you can't smoke cigarettes or I can't, I don't have to pay for them. I don't have to pay for any of your health care. How about we ban alcohol? I use that against Dave, and I really am going to wrap this up in a second. I used that against Dave one time. I said, because uh, he was whining about guns. And I said, well, you know, if we ban alcohol, and I looked up the stats, thousands of children die on the highways. Not necessarily every year, but how many tens of thousands of children over the last four decades have died uh, in car crashes because they were either with somebody who was drunk or got hit by a drunk? And if you don't want to ban alcohol and go back to prohibition, then you want thousands of children to die and that blood's on your hands. So these people are idiots. Have a nice day. And don't thank me now for the complete debunking of the wear the mask, wear a mask brigade.